we're off to Curly Ow. Welcome to a day in my life, our life. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so on our way, it's a beautiful day here in Tana. <laughs> Sun's out, guns out, except there's no guns and there's no sun. Uh, we're going to throw some uh, stuff away. We're going to throw some trash away. Yeah, trash. Basura. Guy. Yeah. So if any of you out there look a little bit more like me, you have to be kind of uh, used to getting um, getting stared at a little bit more than usual, or a lot more than usual. It's not really offensive, but uh, maybe it gets a little tiresome at, at times. <laughs> um, sometimes if like you're hanging out with like a Malagasy person, then they even look at the Malagasy person like, oh, this person must be famous because they're hanging out with the Vaza. Like, it was kind of like weird like that sometimes, but. Mm. Well, I have another stereotype for you. Another stereotype? Okay, yeah. go. Anyone. So if we have curly hair, people usually associate us like women who are looking for Vazas. Really? Yeah. Whoops. So yeah, that was a normal uh, stop here. <laughs> Stopped uh, approximately three inches away from this uh, bumper in front of us. But uh, so, Irina, uh -huh. how, why did you, why, like, what was kind of the reasons behind your business? And maybe for the people, the very few people that don't know what it is, uh -huh. um, explain, you know, what you're doing and the motivation behind it. Okay, so you see my hair right now? did not look like this five years ago just because one I did not know my hair was curly and two I well obviously I didn't know how to care for my hair and so five years ago my hair was just this big poofy mess that I was like totally ashamed of and I always wished my hair was straight and so with my with my two friends Ansa and uh, Francette we actually lived and went through the same like um, like hair discrimination while we were younger. Um, family telling us that, oh, your hair, like we always have a problem with our hair. Sometimes we'd be sent back from school because our hair was not neat enough. And um, the only things like options that we had to like feel beautiful about ourselves and especially our hair was to straighten it. And for instance, Ansa, she used um, many chemical relaxers starting from like age 12, 13, 14, that's pretty young. Well, but it is kind of like the, the, the average age to start that, which is very, very sad. And the thing is, she went bald at a certain point. Goodness. Part of her hair, she lost part of her hair, and that's where she realized that she needed something else, and that wasn't it. And many girls actually went through the same thing. And it was actually by sharing our personal stories on our own platform. Um, it was a Facebook group on, um, well, group on Facebook that we call now um, Curly Out Community. By sharing our stories, uh, people actually came together because they lived the same complications that we had. It, it had always been about accepting our hair, um, feeling discriminated against because of our hair, yeah. always having, having to change our hair because it's just not professional enough, neat enough, good enough. And so we actually lost a lot of our self-confidence because of that. And um, that's how we started the Kelio, which is ac which actually is an affirmation that means I am curly, because right. yeah, it wasn't that obvious five years ago. And so what we do basically is that we have the community online, where we um, help people get together around the around the natural hair movement, and we have our own. Um, so the first natural hair spot in Madagascar that we launched in 2020 right like two weeks right before lockdown in our, our city and uh, what we do there is um, actually it would be the, um, the in real life place where we meet the people from the community to take care of their hair because online um, you know little tips and advices and tutorials weren't enough so we decided to become the professionals the experts to really like tend to our types of hair so ranging from wavy hair to curly hair to tighter coils Ooh, average stuff. <laughs> <laughs> no, but no boats out on the lake this, this morning. No bass fishing. Nothing like that. <laughs> uh, joking. 
one of the taller buildings in Madagascar. Way up there Actually, is that's the freaking one of the castle. only skyscrapers in Madagascar. Yeah. Tall that building. used to be orange, but now it's some other things, right? It's um, I think it's called Redland Tour or Redland. I don't know what, but it's Redland something. Redland. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just go ahead and cross. That's nice. You gotta be really aggressive as a pedestrian in this uh, yeah. in this country. Or you'll never get to where you're going. Uh -huh. Oh shit! Um, Oops. Sorry. All right, so you were telling us about the kind of the curly hair movement, and then how you guys opened um, after starting this online community. You said open oh, yeah, a brick the and mortar store. Spa. Yeah. Um, and you <laughs> opened it two weeks before COVID, uh -huh. and obviously that was probably pretty crazy. That was a, a crazy bet, but. We made it anyway, I'd say, like we were very lucky. I don't know what circumstances made it that we actually were one of the rare businesses that thrived through COVID. And at the same time, we managed to help people really like go back to their natural hair. And uh, so we take really like a lot of pride in what we do because it has, we've helped many women and young girls come over that hair hate that we felt because honestly like you know we always tell women to love yourself love your body love yourself the way you are and honestly I could not find a way to do that to love myself and it was through my hair that I was able to um, know the feeling of uh, I mean to, to kind of like understand how it feels to love something afterwards and to have it be like the biggest part of you and so it was like um I'd say a, a canal that I use, that we use to help other women feel the same way. So actually it's very empowering, as some would say, to discover what the real hair was and how to work with their real hair and being able to shift their mindset from that hair hate to hair love. And so that's what we did. And uh, knowing that like, you know, we need to have our daily products also to help maintain the hair because it doesn't just like stay like this it's um we don't take care of naturally curly hair like straight hair obviously and um, that's how we created our own um, beauty product that we called Lua Rano so it actually means um source like going back to our sources and the natural that we have because I mean Madagascar has so many natural ingredients that that that, that we could use and that's what we did and that's what we wanted to put forth in the products that we do also so yeah, so Curly Yao now it's a community, a natural hair spa and a beauty product for the hair. Okay, so you said that started out, you know, just wanting to educate women um, about textured hair, curly hair, tighter coiled hair, um, because of the experiences that you and your other co-founders mm -hmm. had going through school. I mean, I remember one thing you mentioned, like actually being sent home for having messy hair I mean that's 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 pretty wild um, yeah. so you guys took something a passion of yours about you know not just textured hair but also just like self-worth self-love mm -hmm. these types of things and now you've actually created a business you mentioned not only do you have the salon but you're also creating uh, products Lua Ran, mm -hmm. and um, I mean it's 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 quite impressive so what is kind of the the next step for you guys um, you know to kind of keep you guys motivated and keep you guys growing so knowing already that we have that sort of impact is what really keeps us going um, we have the whole of Madagascar to reach so we're just starting in the capital city and it was one goal of us you know to go have a little tour all over Madagascar to meet um, the people and the cultures in all those different coastal and coast cities because the way we care for hair is not the same mm -hmm. and uh, so it, it would really like you know be our aim would be to share what we do and to, to learn from them as they can learn from us at the same time and then the next big thing would be to scale the business so across Madagascar and the surrounding islands and Africa eventually and um, and yeah, to really be able to have you know that distribution system, that production system, because right now it's done by hand. So Durano is done by hand. We're all young women, I'd say, uh, of an average age of age of 24 at the company, doing our little magic, and um, 
30 seconds. I need to focus here. <laughs> okay, so from Madagascar to the surrounding Indian Ocean Islands to Africa to the world? Yeah. I mean, we hope so to the world because, yeah, it would really bring, the idea would be to bring a piece of Madagascar to the international level. So that, that's the dream. Awesome. So yeah, guys, uh, for the last few days, I've gotten time to spend with the arena and some of her, well, our two co-founders and co-workers. And, um, you know, back home, I think my favorite show is probably Shark Tank. So uh, I've seen a lot of Shark Tank pitches. I've seen a lot of um, textured hair products or cosmetic products on the show. And I uh, Truthfully, I, I can say that like I don't think I've seen one uh, more exciting than Guliao because, as Irina said, it's 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 truthfully come from experience. It's not just like you know generally speaking. I mean, these these women have uh, in individual and specific stories of you know where they realized like something wasn't right. And there must be some better solution, and, and they've not just stopped at you know, finding something that works for them, but finding something that works for the community. And, you know, to see this type of empowerment um, not come from outside sources. It's not someone coming from America and saying, oh, you guys should appreciate hair more. Like it's literally coming from within, I think is just really extremely inspiring. And, and not to mention that, you know, now it's not just the salon, which I don't even think that it doesn't really make <laughs> uh makes maybe a, like a quarter of their revenue um, you know they've really grown into the products and distribution and as she said it's all locally made locally sourced 90 percent of it um, and you know this is something that's just just really rare really hard to find and so there's just so many um, kind of key points within uh, within their business and um, I am sure that it's going to be something that um, will be recognized not just here in Madagascar, throughout Madagascar, but um, around the world at some point. Um, and let's just say, like, their hair kind of sells itself. I mean, look look at that, man. Holy Ooh, smokes. Sorry. Let me flip the hair. Let me flip the hair. <laughs> she's just flipping. She's flipping it. So, um, yeah, honestly, this is a side note. Like, when I first saw their, I've known Irina for, like, five years now. She and her sister were really gracious and hosting this uh <laughs> this uh, crazy vaza, and uh, so I'm very, very appreciative of that, and even more appreciative of the fact that you know, as soon as I arrived, she said, "Hey, you want to come in to work with me?" And it's been really cool to just um, see see everything here. I mean, a lot of one thing we didn't mention is, um, you know, there's there's some examples of you know women who have gone through other types of trauma um, that we have in the United States and, and elsewhere, but. Um, you know, it, it can be quite you know traumatic for, for people here, and this has become a support community, not just about hair, but about you know other life situations, yeah, and exactly. um, it's just really powerful. They're really really touching key points, um, key needs everywhere, and um, all I can say is, um, you know, what's your excuse? You know, if you believe in something, and you want to do something for for the better. Um, Instead of finding out, you know, the job that makes a lot of money, find the passion of yours that you really want to pursue and figure out how to make money from doing that passion. And that's really what uh, Irina, her co-founders, and, and all of uh, Kuliao has, has done. So it's been really cool. And uh, for anyone that doesn't think this kind of thing comes from Africa or from Madagascar or from the global south, uh, you're very wrong. Um, so... We'll take some videos as we get in here, probably. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Yeah. The guys here, they're here to pack and take the delivery that we have for uh, today. Gotcha. And um, the rest of the team, let's do it. The rest of the team, they're here, as I said, to um, answer um, all the messages from the weekend and everything. But like the hair salon, we're not receiving any um, clients today. But the girls are in for their um, for their, uh, <laughs> for their daily training. This is Olivia. <laughs> and uh, Fanila. 
So yeah, we're a team of all girls. All girls. And actually, we're the first guy who's been playing with us. Oh man. <laughs> oh no. It's pretty dope set. All the cool pictures on the back here. More little room in the guest This is like their team picture. Oh look, here they are. Does she look familiar? Hey. 